So this uh, third video is all about the installation of the old uh, recycled or repurposed windows that we have. We have found them at uh, re repurposed stores. Uh, there's one particular store in, in Seattle and in Tacoma called Earthwise. We picked up quite a few and they have a really good deal or even some antique stores or, or uh, secondhand stores picked up some of these windows. And so all the installation information that we are going to be providing and cleaning up the windows and also um, a little bit of information I'll probably provide about the installation of these uh, glass blocks that I had and I found at Earthwise in Tacoma actually in Seattle and I left about a six and a half foot uh, six and a half inch space between the door frame and the window frames so I could fill in with these five and a half inch square uh, glass blocks and I just basically mortared them in with regular mortar so I didn't have the thin set kind of white uh, mortar that other people recommended I just used the regular mortar and it's it actually has come together really well so enjoy this it'll help you I have some ideas about installing your own uh, old repurposed or recycled windows in a greenhouse so I made a quick trip into Seattle and this is the Earthwise salvage warehouse where you can find lots of building materials and um, I'll just I'll make a quick trip just to see if they have any more of the 24 inch by uh, 47 or 48 inch windows here in the Seattle warehouse all this repurposed uh, building materials they have a very large supply of windows of all different sizes you can see the various uh, measurements on each window so all you have to do is kind of know what you're looking for and uh, be able to come in here and look for the different sizes they're fairly cheap uh, depending on how many actual window panes they have in this one that's 24 by 36 is a uh, 32 dollars because it has a lot more glass and glass panes in it so it depends on, depends on what you're looking for but you can find definitely the sizes and the different variable sizes that you, if you want to try to make a concentric looking greenhouse uh, there's places like this that I'm also going to be heading down to Tacoma one to see what they have I'm also looking for some of those glass blocks that are four inches thick to fill in some of the gaps on my construction my greenhouse but just for a word to the wise for those who are looking for construction materials for your greenhouse and repurposed uh, windows. This is a good place to find it. This is on um, South 4th Street, um, pretty close to the freeway here in Seattle. So this is the upstairs main building at Earthwise in Tacoma where all of their uh, repurposed or recycled windows are. So this is where I got most of the windows for my greenhouse. And so you just basically have to get up here and dig through and figure out what you need and what certain sizes you need. And they have a real large selection and typically it changes quite often. So. You just have to come back and check it out and see what's available in their inventory. The process of preparing the window frames, the recycled window frames to go up into the greenhouse may require a little bit of trimming of the edges. These two particular uh, windows that I secured at the Earthwise Recycling the Building Materials down in Tacoma were very, very similar, but uh, one had already been trimmed down to 17 inches, the other one was at 18 inches, so I thought I'd go ahead and just rip uh, about an inch off and uh, prepare it so that uh, as we we're going to get it ready, I'll just rip it right through this uh, table saw. So this is some of the process, some of the things you'll have to do in order to get it ready to install. Well, now that the uh, greenhouse made out of recycled or repurposed windows has been framed up, the foundation's been built, this video is about the actual installation of the windows. And so the very first thing that I've attempted to do to, in order to put the windows in place was to, um, to attach these two by two, that's a two inch by two inch uh, fur, uh, little pieces of wood to the interior of the actual frames where the, all the windows are going to go and so these are all placed on the back side of the 2 by 4 so that the windows can actually be placed in the forward part of the opening and then screwed into place and so I've been going around and, and, and applying all of these or attaching all of these 2 by 2s all around and then after I've got the lower level uh, actually completed on the lower level of the uh, greenhouse and the front also I'm beginning to actually attach the windows and so all of them are just placed uh, into the opening and screwed into the 2x2 two two. and I'm actually uh, using a little bit of shims just to hold it up and get it into place. Uh, they're a little bit rough still, they're going to be cleaned up and painted over all the old paint once they're all in place and uh, there might be a little bit of work to be done on some of the windows because some of them may have a few cracked panes and so I'm going to have to replace a few and some of the windows I've got in the garage are still needing completely have some missing panes and so I, I've applied all the 2x2s, two uh, most of the 2 bytes, not, not the upper level but the lower level of two by twos all the way around in all the window openings and I'm going to begin to actually screw them into place at this point and so it's a fun process now some of the windows that I have found the repurposed windows from some of the uh, 
the stores or wherever they've gotten them are all pretty rustic in them. Some of them have a, some a paint on them and flaked paint. So it's really important to probably get rid of as much of the loose paint as possible. If it's older paint, if it's leaded base paint, I'm just going to seal it in with a really a several coats of the white paint that I have. But the prep work that has to be done before actually installing the windows into the slots within the spaces I've created really needs to be done first. And so I'm going to work on this window and the other one I have, they're, they're going to be going in the wall here in a second or in a few minutes. I uh, do need to clean them up a little bit. If there's any hardware that needs to be removed, some of them have had some hinges. Some of them have some kind of this pin stop that holds it in place. It's a very, very vintage style of uh, holding the, the window in place. And so I'll have to remove some of those and try to get it cleaned up. And anything that's really loose, try to removing that flaky paint. Some of the actual, um, the, the repointing of the, of the and the caulking of all the windows, I'm going to have to probably do that after I get in place. I'm going to go ahead and get them up and then go back and do some of the, the uh, fixing and repointing of it and fixing some of the caulking. So that's some of the process I'm going to be doing right now. I'm just installing them, cleaning them up as much as possible get them screwed into place and then after that's all done then I'll keep on working on cleaning them up. Well I'm continuing installing some of the windows. One of the problems I found in the process of installing them is that these are vintage windows and so um, antique or vintage windows were constructed. They're called double hung sash windows and one would kind of pull down in front of the other. There'd be you know different configurations in old and old houses but uh, typically an old sash window like this was a lot thicker at the bottom. The, the, the width of the frame was a lot thicker than the actual top, than the top was. And so in order to actually install these windows in a in an even, in a balanced way, in a concentric uh, way, I had to uh, actually trim off and rip the uh, part of the edge of these particular ones to make them fit better and actually look a little bit more balanced and even in the actual opening. And so the installation is going to take a little bit extra tweaking, a little extra trimming and ripping on some of the edges to make the old, uh, old sash windows fit and, and look good. And so I'll be covering all of the edges, the outer edges, with little one by uh, one by twos and thin. Uh, I may even trim them down a little bit to make them fit better. But anyway, they're going to cover over these gaps that are here between the main frame and the actual window. So all of it is going to come together. But it's really important for a person using old-fashioned, uh, you know, recycled, repurposed windows that. You know, the old windows weren't all, all the same size on the frame all the way around. So you're going to have to do a little bit of trimming. You have to do a little bit of shimming at the bottoms in different places to make it all fit. And it's just a little bit of a extra work will have to be done to make it look good. But it's a lot of fun making it fit together like a puzzle. So have a good time doing it. Well, part of the installation of the windows process is the actual cleaning up of the frames. And some of the old uh, window frames that I actually purchased over the last uh, year or so uh, were, uh, were great and they're old, but they have no window panes in them. And so the actual uh, cleaning up of the interior of the frame and removing the old putty, the caulking, the putty, and the old points that are uh, embedded, the little metal points that hold the glass in place, that'll have to be removed. So this particular uh, frame is going to have to be uh, completely cleaned up. It, it, it has has uh, has no window panes in it. This one that's very similar to it, I got in the same store, it actually has all the window panes in it you know, all the way down. It just needs to be cleaned up. And once I get it installed, uh, some of the uh, caulking or the, the, the putty will have to be, I'll install it there uh, as it's hung uh, rather than do it before. I'll just do it. I actually go scrape it. I'll get all the, the loose uh, paint off first, then I'll put it up there. So here's one of the windows I'm working on. It's going to go uh, into the frame, just like this one on the right. They'll, there's another opening here on the left. This one had uh, two windows. One was cracked. One was completely uh, missing. So the scraping process, removing the removing the old putty right in here, and then uh, there's some very very uh, fine points. There's some uh, the metal points are right in there. They'll have to be removed. I'll have to probably get some new ones. Uh, new ones to place right in there. Another one right up here. And so just the repointing holding the glass in place and then the, uh, the, the putty, they'll have to be reinstalled. And so all of this has to happen as you're preparing the windows before they're actually uh, put up there. And so this particular one, putting the panes in and everything, I'm going to do this. All, all that work needs to be done on a table. But the actual just the, putting a, some fresh putty up is going to be an easier process. And so we'll go ahead and do that after the windows have been, have been installed. And so uh, it's coming together. The windows are being installed. I have about almost 20 of the windows installed now inside the, the greenhouse. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it all come together uh, as it's um, 
being put together. The higher ones, uh, higher up above the actual, uh, on the eave and the gable, will be a little bit more difficult to install, but we'll get to that and hopefully in a few weeks. And so I'll let you know how it's going. So keep uh, working on your own greenhouses and I hope this has been helpful for you. So right now I'm installing the top window in our uh, greenhouse that we're building. This is one of the oldest windows that we have that we got actually 35 years ago when Lisa and I were first married in Wenatchee. We found this old stained glass window when we were living in 1982 in great grandmother's house next door to Grandpa Cecil and Grandma Lucy. And so we found this. It was actually the house there was built in 1920. So this house, this, this stained glass window was kind of floating on the floor. It was not even attached in the breezeway between the garage and the old white house where Grandpa Cecil parked the old Pontiac car. So we found this, we got it, we stored it for 35 years. So just now we've installed it. It'll be the upper gable up here. And so in the morning sunlight as it comes in, it's gonna illuminate great, great grandma Cora's stained glass window and, and uh, gra great grandpa David, Poppy they called him. And so it'll be part of a, a centerpiece of our, uh, our whole greenhouse right here. So we're glad to have it and thank you. Well, I'm still trying to install some of the windows and so part of the process uh, that I had to found out in to fix some of the windows was some of them were missing some of the panes, the glass in the these old fashioned sash windows, wooden windows. And so in order to prepare them to be installed, I had to get some new pieces of glass and I'm installing some of these right now. So this one particular one is missing a few and actually had three broken ones. And so I cleaned out all the interiors of the area where the glass is going to fit. I pulled out some of the old uh, glazing points, the old glazing points. Points uh, for the old triangular little pieces that they uh, inserted into that little frame to hold the glass in. And so now I am installing this new piece of glass. And so the actual glazing points you can find at most hardware stores, fairly cheap. You can p pick up quite a few uh, per box. And so they're really easy to install. You press them into the side frame right there. And then uh, you go ahead and, and take. Uh, this little piece, I take like a chisel, a wood chisel, and I just kind of rock it back and forth. And as it begins to go in, it just easy, it in, it inserts itself right into the wood by a little bit of pressure and rocking back and forth with this uh, with this chisel. And there you go. The, uh, the actual glazing point is installed, and I have several I've been installing here in this particular window. And so after all the glazing points are installed, then I'll be go ahead and use the, the glazing putty, the glaze, to, to insert into the actual crevice, the little uh, L-shaped crevice there to hold it in place, and it'll seal it in. Some of the other windows I've been doing recently have already been, a few had to be replaced Some of the windows there, the glass uh, panes. And so those were glazed and repointed. Uh, over here was a window that was a complete window with no glass in it, so all of it's been reglazed, repointed, reglazed, and, and the window's been installed inside the greenhouse. And so all this process has to be done as we're preparing some of these older windows that had some damage to them or the missing windows or broken windows. We're just getting them all prepared so they can be installed. So it's part of the process. So here's a little information about actually how to spread the window glazing. First, uh, you get it out of the tub, and you need to work it a little bit and create sort of a, a rope situation. So you take it and put it between your hands, and you roll it, creating about, a, you know, three-eighths to no more than a half an inch thick rope. And uh, depending on the thickness of the actual uh, the area that you're wanting to fill, the V-groove there, well, after you've gotten the, the points all put in place, you kind of lay it in there, you stretch it out, and then uh, once you have it there, I'll probably need a little bit more to get all the way across, but that's kind of how it looks. And then you take one of these uh, three or four inch uh, putty knives that are very flexible, that's what I like to use, and you lay it down in, in, on top of the groove area, and you just press it, and you begin to run it parallel, horizontal to that V groove, and it spreads the, the putty out nicely. Take all the extra, you just scrape it off, all the excess, you can throw it back in there to the groove, just keep going back and forth till you get a nice, even, pressed look the way you like it. And uh, go over it two or three times and get it to the way you like it, and then you'll be done. That's how you do it. So some of the last steps I have before I'll actually install the last few windows in the... Uh, the greenhouse, some of the upper windows that are in the higher parts of the gables. Before I actually install those, I'm going to put some siding and actually uh, cover over some of the void areas. The void areas that were above the windows and the blocking area, so that needs to have some siding or some areas 
that actually fill in the gaps. And so I have, I've actually covered around like a skirting around the upper portions of the windows with this old barn wood. So I have found over the last few years, I've been accumulating some of the old barn wood. So I'm installing it now, covering over some of the void areas, the triangular void areas where windows will not be. And so I've already finished the the other side, the other front gable that faces the uh, west or the house. And at this time, I'm actually installing some of the old barn wood here. And as I'm going up and, cover, and kind of custom cutting it so it'll all fit uh, perfectly around the, the open areas where the windows are going to go. But these void areas, these triangular areas, are going to have to be covered with the barn wood. So that's one of the last few steps I have before the final installation of some of the windows. And then after that, we'll go to the, uh, the roof, putting the roof on. So. So all the windows now have been installed and the last few things I'll need to do to work on the whole project is the actual installation of some kind of hinging type of apparatus for all my upper windows that are going to be hinged to open up so that they'll be vented in the, in the summertime. So it's now September, it's taken me the whole summer and the springtime to get it all built and put together. But I'm excited about it, the, all the windows are now in, the, in there. I'll be basically need to kind of do a little seal, some trim around the outer edges of it before they're all sealed in. But everything has been completely caulked on the inside and sealed and so there's really everything is sealed from the weather and the winter and all the rain so it's ready to go. So the next step in the whole process is the installation of the actual corrugated polycarbide or whatever you call it, the uh, plastic uh, uh, corrugated uh, roofing. And so that's the next step in the whole process and that'll be for the next video.